my instructors, I'd like to show you how to use unknowns in inorganic so you can use this as you need with your students. The easiest way to access unknowns is from the clipboard. When you click on that, there are three basic types of unknowns. Basic unknowns or advanced unknowns. They function a little bit differently in how the answers are shown to you, so let me walk you through those. The basic unknowns, you would just tell your students once you've taught them how to separate the different types of cations, you'd tell them to choose one of the groups, and then it would list at the bottom of the clipboard what the potential cations in that tube would be. If they click on the unknown, then an unknown test tube is created here. You can see that there's a number at the top. This number, would you could look up in your answer key and it tells you exactly what cations are in there. So then the students can do all the different tests and then report to you, I had this un unknown number and this is what I think is in the tube. That's one way to do it. Another way to do these is these advanced unknowns fixed. With these, a student would choose once again one of these groups and an unknown tube is created for them. This does not have a number on it, but you can look it up in your answer key. It's under advanced unknowns fixed, and this tube has a specific set of cations in it that you could find in that answer key. The last way to do them from the clipboard is this advanced unknowns random category. In this section, the students would choose one of the groups once again. They could choose it, it tells them the options of what could be in it, but the way they will determine what's in this tube is with this lab book. When they click on the lab book, they can then click the report button and then select the buttons for whatever they think is in that tube. So I'm just guessing a student would actually do the test, they would determine what's in the tube, click submit, and then based on the colors of these boxes, they know if they've determined the cations correctly. So if they're all green, they got them right. If they're all red, they got them wrong. Mix, they got some right, some wrong. And then a report button is, is um, created here on the side. The student could then write any notes on the procedures they did here. And then they will click file, save, and they'll save the file for you with whatever code you tell them to do. And then they can send you this lab book file either through your LMS system or through email, however you communicate with your students. Then you could then on your computer in, in organic, you can click file, open, locate the file they send you and open it up and check and see how they did on that. They could repeat this as many times as they need until they get them right. The last way to create unknowns is with this unknowns card. When they click that, they can create an unknown with any number of cations in it. And then they can select minimum, maximum, how many cations could be in that tube, and then click create unknown. With that, a tube is created here. Once again, there is not a number on it. It's called a practice unknown, and they would report and determine what is in that tube exactly as before using the lab book, clicking report and then entering the cations that they think are in it, clicking submit, and then getting, once again, a report. You could also assess these as an instructor. We hope this helps you to understand how they work. Please let us know if you have any further questions.